Hey guys, it's Kat and I am back today to reflect on my favorite products of 2020. Now I thought I wanted to do this before filming my, tw my favorite products of 2021 because when I was thinking about products that I love, I actually was getting quite a few confused with last year. So like the tail end of last year. So I thought what I'll do leading up to that video, I will reflect on the products that I mentioned in my favorites last year and talk about, do I still like them? Do I, have I changed my mind? Uh, do I keep still use them or whatever? I wanted to sort of reflect on that first and then next video will be my favorites of 2021. Now I have moved house, but I haven't figured out where I want to set up my sort of filming area. So um, this is just spontaneous. So if it looks like shit, let me know. I think it will. It's half natural light. This is like the good light and this is artificial light, but I'm not facing the window. So it's sort of, you know, get, get it. It's hard. I'm going to figure something out, but I thought I wanted to get this video up. So I don't have all my final videos for the year, like right at the end of the year, I wanted to sort of break them up a little bit. So I'm going to go through the products in order of when I mentioned them in my 2020 video. Um, and I'm going to start with palettes. Now I mentioned the Too Faced Born This Way Natural Nudes palette and then also the Natural Lust palette which had been discontinued but I bought it like I think it was like 50% off um, in on sale and I was really happy that I bought it. So let's talk about those first. So the Natural Nudes and the Natural Lust, very different palettes but I, I love them. I still love them. To be fair I haven't used them much this year. Um, this is like the permanent one so um, I love this as like a standard sort of nude palette that has cooler tone nudes, pinky nudes, goldy nudes, brownie nudes with mattes and shimmers. I love this palette. There's nothing I dislike about it. And um, this is the sort of palette that if I was to declutter like all of my palettes, but maybe five of them be like my everyday sort of palette because I, I gravitate towards these colors all the time. And this pairing is so easy. So you can either just use the duo, which I often do that naturally anyway. I'll put a shimmer on the lid, a matte in the crease. That's what I've got going on today. Not with this palette, but um, you know, it is what it is. So if you're really bad at pairing colors, you've got the pairs sort of already done for you, or you can sort of just uh, delve into certain sections of the palettes and they all the shades all work well together. Um, so yeah, I still love this. It's one that I will keep in my collection and eventually get around to using a lot more. Um, a hindrance that I had this year with every item I'm talking about is I was pretty full on with my Pan That Palette series, my Project Apocalypse, and also my Project Pan. So that was the main makeup that I was using all year. So if these products weren't in one of those series, they didn't really get a second look because I was trying to make progress um, either trying to use up products or test out my whole lip collection. So um, yeah, that only wasn't used much at all for that very reason. And the same goes for this palette here. Uh, this was uh, discontinued or limited edition, I'm not sure, um, but I loved certain elements of this palette. And all I'm looking on the screen is this pop of bloody pink in the corner. I don't know why Too Faced always have to do that, but if you take away that hideous pop of pink, there's some beautiful olive shades, beautiful sort of subtle golds, um, nice bronzes, some more pinky toned nudes, which aren't really my jam, but I'll forgive it. I particularly liked this sort of cooler section down here. It was really easy to use cool toned nudes. Um, so yeah, I still love this palette. And again, this is a palette that I would probably want to like pan in the future um, because I can see myself being happy to use this all year round uh, for a whole year because there's a lot of variety in here. Like it looks boring. There's predominantly nude, obviously with just the pops of color here and there. But that's sort of how I like my eye makeup. If I want a pop of bright, it's usually on the lips for me. Um, so yeah, I still dig this. And even though I haven't used it, I still love it. I then spoke about some smaller palettes. Um, I started with my Natasha Denona. This is the mini glam palette. So this came out before the large glam palette. And look, realistically, if you've been watching my uh, No Buy series, you'll know that I've been banging on about the Natasha Denona Glam palette, the large palette with like cooler tones and how I really wanted that pretty much the majority of the year. But to be fair, I think this sort of format and this small pan format and these shades are pretty much what I'm gonna reach for on a daily basis anyway. So buying that large palette 
just for a little bit more variety. I don't, I feel like this is all I really need. So I still love this and I have used this a few times this year despite panning palettes and mainly focusing on those. This still has been in my top drawer and something that I reach for on a quick makeup day because I can easily go for this sort of bronzy shade, blend it out with this shade. If I want something a bit deeper or cooler toned, I can go for this shade. I've got a darker brown and I've got either a highlight or just a quick champagne sort of uh, slightly pinky gold um, shade uh, that I can throw all over the lid. So this is definitely an easy makeup palette for me and I still enjoy it. One palette that I don't enjoy as much is uh, the That's Tote palette from Colourpop. Now I do love the colour story of this and I did re-watch my video and I did mention that the formula wasn't like fantastic but the colour story if you like taupes is a good one and I do agree with that. I just feel like this is and I mentioned it I did mention it in my favourites video um, but this is just very sort of redundant. The top three shades pretty much all look the same. There's no variety there. Um, I do like this middle row of like all over lid colours but this is a super shock shadow formula and it's getting a little bit dry and crumbly. I think the fact that you can't close the lid properly it's just you know, a cardboard flap, it's making this harder and harder to use. So I think longevity wise, this is not a palette that I'm gonna keep around. I'd much prefer to keep the Natasha Denona one because I feel like even though um, this one has slightly different tones, this is delving a little bit more into the taupey cooler tone shades, which I do like. I feel like the quality here is something that I'd prefer to work with than this. So even though I, I do like the looks I create from this, it's becoming a little bit of a struggle and I don't like struggle when it comes to makeup. I don't, I've got so much makeup. When I've moved house, oh my God, I've literally, I think I had like 10 boxes of makeup, if not more. I've got one box left to unpack, but I have been trying to minimize my collection and I want it to fit into like one Alex desk from Ikea and two little Alex drawers. And that's all, that's all I want. My brushes, my palettes, my everything to fit into. Um, because at the moment I'm looking at my desk and I'm like, I've got boxes of palettes and stuff under my desk and I've got nowhere to put them at the moment. So I need to declutter and I need to get rid of things. And I feel like this is one of those products that would be on the chopping block. But what I am going to do in the new year is um, a series where I maybe test a palette. Like if it's something small like this, I might test it only over two or three days. Um, and then at the end of the month, I'm going to reflect on what, um, palettes I've used that month. I've sh I'll show you a few looks and I'll tell you if I'm going to declutter them or not. So, uh, similar to Project Apocalypse, which I'm doing that with lip products, which is continuing, uh, for a few months into 2021. I'm also going to start an eyeshadow palette version because I have too many eyeshadow palettes. And do I want to hold on to things that I can get similar effects with, but this one's just a little bit more work. Like, do I need both? Probably not. So I am going to keep this to test again properly in that series. But to be honest, this is no longer a favorite. I like the color story. I don't like the formula. I still love these. Oh my God. Viseart Paris Edit and Spritz Edit palettes. Oh my God. I love this format of palette. They're just so precious. So you open them up and look how small they are. Look how gorgeous. You have 12 pans, so you get variety. It's got a little cover on it as well. I'll take it off so you can see it. This is the Paris edit. But if I compare it to like even the pan size of Too Faced, you can see it's an itty bitty pan. It's probably almost half the size, um, which I like because if you've ever panned an eyeshadow, you'll know it actually takes a long time. And I sort of like the idea of having these little capsule small palettes that are easy to throw in your handbag or travel bag if you want to, um, but also really easy to create a few looks out of. There's different textures in here. There's different colors. Um, and the formula of these are like beautiful. So I still love these. And um, again, these haven't had much love because of my uh, Pan That Palette series. Um, but these still have a good, a nice place in my heart. And I, yeah, I can tell you these are going to survive any review that I do of them in the next year because I love the quality so much. And some of the shades are just like this shade here. You can see how much it's reflecting the light at the moment, but it is a beautiful, like metallic. I've been actually keeping my eye out for more releases of these uh, because they have been releasing more color stories 
They're just unfortunately not color stories that I like more than these. And I think I said this in my uh, 2020 favorites as well. If a color story, like a taupey color story came out in this formula and format, I would order that in a heartbeat because these are so on my radar. Look how compact and like easy. Imagine just having a set of like 10 of these and having like all the colors you want in a beautiful formula and in a format that you know that if you no longer want that palette, if you use it for maybe like six months to a year, you'll pretty much finish it up and it'll be done. So there's no real issue with it going bad or um, yeah, wasting the product. The last palette I mentioned was the M Cosmetics uh, Divine Skies eyeshadow palette. Now I still love this, but again, broken record. I haven't used it much this year. This color story isn't really my jam. It's too pinky for me. Um, M Cosmetics have released a couple more of these and probably tones that I would prefer over this. But again, nothing yet that has made me like add it, something to the cart and buy it. But I am on the lookout and I'm always interested in um, the new color stories that come in this, um, this format. Um, and because this formula is beautiful, it reminds me a lot of NARS. So it's not the most intense, but it is very, very flattering and really complimentary to um, people with skin texture issues on their eyes. It just glides on beautifully, blends itself, easy to apply. Again, this is sort of like um, just quick, but flattering makeup, which is what I vibe with these days. Some people call it mum makeup, but this is sort of, you know, yeah, if you want to look good, but not look like you've put in too much effort and not spend an hour doing your eyeshadow, this is the kind of formula that I like. So again, haven't used it much, but do really appreciate it still. All right, onto cream liquid eyeshadows. Uh, I mentioned my Natasha Denona. These are the chromium liquid eyeshadows. I've got Infra Nude and Ultraviolet. Now I still do really like these and I'm actually getting into cream eyeshadows a lot lately. Um, I ordered some Korean ones a little while ago and they're, it's what I've been using a lot lately. It's sort of like you just put a little bit on with the wand, uh, like the little, this has like a little doe foot applicator, put some on, blend it out with a brush, put a bit of a matte color in the crease and sort of off you go. So you get that sort of intense either metallic or shimmer effect, um, but very minimal effort. So I still really like these. Again, I think I've only used them once or twice throughout the year, but whenever I do wear them, I get a lot of compliments because these are multi-chrome and you probably can't tell on camera, but they do shift. Um, so one's like uh, purple to green to blue, and one is like almost like an orangey red to gold to green. And this one, this nude one's a lot more subtle. So it's like, I would call it an everyday multi-chrome. And this one's a little bit more like statement, sort of purple eye, but they both in my opinion work really nicely. And they're things that I will throw on if I want a bit of fun on the eyes. I talked about a Laura Mercier caviar stick in Eau Naturale. Now this is not it because I used that one up. That was a beautiful sort of like satin matte, um, slightly cool toned nude-ish color, um, which I really enjoyed using. It was really quick, um, especially in 2020 because I had my baby in 2020. Um, it took 12 months. 12 months for my baby to sleep more than one sleep cycle when he was napping. So uh, if people aren't familiar, a sleep cycle for a baby is about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and his was about 30. So I could only put him down for 30 minutes. Um, and that was a couple of times a day. I couldn't get more than a 30 minute break. So whenever I put makeup on, I needed it to be really quick and simple and almost apply itself. And so I found that Eau Naturale shade was a really nice sort of pick me up. Gave the effect that you had something on your eyes, but nothing too much. It was sort of like no makeup makeup for your eyes, if that makes sense. So I really enjoyed it. I used it up. So would I repurchase it straight away? Um, no, looking at all my eyeshadows that I have, I won't, but it's definitely something that if I see in a pack or if I've used up all my stick eyeshadows and I'm just craving it, I'd have no problem buying it again. Um, but I definitely do not need it in my collection right now. My collection is too much, too much. All right, then I mentioned two eyeliners. Now, one of them I think is still in that one little damn box that I haven't unpacked yet, and no doubt it's right at the bottom. So I haven't gone looking for it, but it's the M Cosmetics liquid liner. I think it's called Illustrative Eyeliner Brush Tip in Brown. Now I'm sure it's still good. Haven't been using it much in the past year because um, I was 
predominantly panning a gel eyeliner from MAC. So if I did any wing liner, that was the one I was focusing on, um, but I'm, I'm sure it's still good. Uh, I also mentioned this Smashbox Always On Liquid Eyeliner. Now I still really do like this. I think this is a really good one. Um, it's got this sort of firmer uh, felt tip. So it doesn't bend and move, which sounds like it's not super flexible and people want flexibility, but I feel like if you want to stamp and you want to sort of use this as a bit of a stamper, I think it works really well. And I like how this wears. It doesn't bleed on me. I have mentioned in the past that liquid liners, I'm usually not a huge fan of because 50% of the time they will bleed and sort of by bleeding, I mean that when they're sort of closer to the inner part of my eyes, I get quite watery eyes. So if any like, eye juices, tears, water, whatever, uh, gets on them. They sort of, sort of, um, break down and look messy and sometimes get in my eyes. So this one doesn't do it. The M Cosmetics one doesn't do it. So I do still like them. And yes, I've got an eyeliner that I've had for a year that I haven't touched, but uh, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. All right. The next category is sort of like face color products. And this is the fun one because these are the ones that I was actually thinking of putting in my 2021 favorites until I realized that I actually mentioned them last year. So I don't like to repeat favorites. Um, I only like to talk about things that I sort of discovered in that past year. Anyway, I'm talking about the Mac. This is the glow play blush in the shade. That's peachy. I love it. It's one of those sort of putty blushes. I find it really easy to apply on my oily skin. So if you have oily skin, you would know it's kind of harder to wear sort of these cream blushes or liquid blushes because it often disrupts your base. Now to counteract the oiliness, you end up having to set your makeup down quite um, quite well with a powder to make it not break down and move with your oils. And then if you then apply a cream or a liquid on top of that, it ends up making your, like lifting your foundation and making things look really patchy. So I'm generally not a cream or liquid color fan on my face because it often takes a lot more effort to apply than what it's worth, if that makes sense. Also, if it's a day like today, which is 34 degrees and really hot, and I currently have a sweat mustache going on, hopefully you don't see that. I have also sweaty armpits. It is, it's very hot. On days like that, creamy products also sweat off a lot easier on oily skin. So there are limitations with cream and liquid products, but this one is really, really great because it's that putty. It's almost like a cream to powder. This one applies really nicely, like a stippling brush or even like a sponge, just put it in and you can just like put it on like a normal uh, br brush, blush. And um, it sort of just ends up turning into this really beautiful sort of glowy, um, product. So it's not creamy. This feels dry, like it's gone to a matte finish, but it's got a nice luminosity to it that gives you that sort of almost cream effect. It's just really beautiful. So it's almost like a shimmery blush, but not chunky glittery or not like over the top shimmery. Um, it's like a beautiful sheen that just makes you look really healthy. So I still love this really lovely brush, brush, fuck, blush. Another thing that I wanted to put in my favorites of 2021 was my M Cosmetics. This is like a serum uh, blush. M Cosmetics Color Drops Serum Blush in Venetian Rose. That's what this is. So I still love this. There's issues with getting it out. Um, the applicator is not great. We did do a sort of like a testing out on the Beauty News channel to see um, if their way of describing how to dispense this, if it works, and it does. But what we also demonstrate is that some bottles have issues and others don't. So some are really hard to dispense and others are really easy to dispense. So if you've got one of these and you're like, they've always been fine. I've had no issues with getting the product out. Um, it, it might be that you had a good one and I don't think it's actually the packaging that varies. I think it might be the consistency of the product. These are too thick to be in this sort of dropper uh, format. Um, so if you maybe have a slightly runnier batch, maybe it dispenses a bit easier. I'm not too sure, but some dispense well and some others don't. And I have seen that reflected by people's comments where they have said that they've got a collection of these. Some of them they had to get rid of because they just couldn't get it out and others worked perfectly. So I think it really depends on which one you get. But moral to the story, I still love these to the extent that I bought two more. So this is a peach shade, peachy peach, and I've got sunset sky. So I did actually go back and buy more this year. 
texture. So technically I could put these in my favorites. I just love what these offer the skin. These are a little bit more finicky than a powder blush, of course, um, but I feel like they are worth the effort. This to me is like your cheeks version of um, a red lip. It just makes things look so gorgeous. I might try to demonstrate it. I'm gonna go for the peachy peach. I still love Venetian Rose as sort of like your everyday dusty pinky nude shade, but I also really gravitate towards orangey peach blushes. So this is my equal first favorite and this one's a little bit too bright for me. So I've just got a little bit on the back of my hand there and I've just got the sponge that I applied my foundation with today and I'm going to put a little bit on uh, the the, anyway, this is over set makeup. I look really gross and dewy, but that's partly lighting, partly sweat. Oh, sweat mustache is really kicking in. Um, but I just wanted to show you that if you are very gentle with this, I feel like this is better applied with a sponge. If you do apply this with like a kabuki brush or something that, that you sort of buff in, it can definitely lift your makeup, but just dabbed on with a sponge it's gorgeous the color is gorgeous and the effect is really gorgeous I'm not sure if you're gonna see this in this lighting um, but even with my oily makeup this is not lifting this is applying really nicely so hopefully you can see that that glow is just spectacular and it's again not shimmer it's just the finish of it it's a little bit balmy it doesn't set down but it does sit nicely over set makeup but don't touch it because it's gonna like move your base but it's like a statement blush and I love it and now when I go out for dinner tonight I'm gonna have to take off this lip because the cheeks are the primary thing it has to go with a gloss now so yeah I like one feature being the main thing and at the moment the cheeks are competing with the lips but you can see what I mean like it's a statement cheek and if I want a statement cheek I keep reaching for these they're gorgeous I still love them as you can tell. Then I mentioned a few products from Nabla. I talked about their skin glazing products. These are sort of like highlighters and the skin bronzing products. I've got the shade Ozone and Ambra here. Now these are beautiful. I really like the effect of these, but I'm not gonna to talk too much about them because I have not worn them in the past year. Again, I've been panning face palette, one sort of uh, bronzer highlight and predominantly blush palette and then one highlight palette so these have been ignored and I need to retest them to see how I feel about them again this year because they have not they have not been touched all right onto lip products I love lip products they're my favorite part of makeup so here we go um, I first mentioned two ultra glossy lips from Colourpop I really like the ultra glossy lip formula I think it's sort of basic but ticks all boxes it feels nice it's not too sticky it looks good um, I just like everything about it and they're a really good price point um, they're definitely my favorite glosses from Colourpop don't listen to them pushing their new like oh, um what is it Lux blah 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 nah mate those are nowhere near as good as the original ultra glossy lip like stick to the ultra glossy lip but I have the two shades Rattler which is this beautiful cooler toned it looks like a normal nude but on the lips it does give more of a cool tone effect a little bit like 90s brown sort of cool tone brown I really dig it it's just a cream finish there's no shimmer in there and the shade Queen Cobra which is a shimmery um, light translucent nude which almost looks clear on the lips but there's a bit of like champagne shimmer to it now these both survived my declutter um and i i don't know if i love them i don't know if they're, i love them to the point where they're like you have to buy them they're stand out but whenever i use them i'm like these are solid these are great these are things i'd put in my handbag and i can see myself at least panning them and using them up before I decide to ever declutter them because again they look nice and the formula is great so I think I mentioned these in my favorites last year just because they were released with that um, that's taupe palette um, and it was sort of like the lip glosses I was reaching for towards the end of last year but um, they're not stand out as being like amazing but they're yeah they survived my declutter, so there's that. All right, the next three lipstick ranges are ones that I haven't actually, believe it or not, I have not even featured these in my Project Apocalypse series yet. And I think partly it's because I love them. So I sort of want to like, I don't want to criticize them or declutter them. I just want to like, I love them and I still do love them. 
but I am looking forward to a month where I slot these into um, a theme so I can review them all. First one, Nabla Dreamy Creamy Lipstick. This is hands down still one of my favorite sort of like shiny, creamy liquid lipsticks. So they're not the liquid lipsticks that set down matte and like dry out your lips. These stay creamy and shiny on the lips and opaque, but they, they last so well and they don't smear. These are like a really beautiful bullet, creamy, shiny lipstick, but in a liquid formula. These still, I love. The only ones I would probably declutter in my series are shades that I'm not gonna wear too often, but I still love the formula. Uh, the next one that I still, again, still love, but haven't used much this year, are the Sigma Infinity Point Lipsticks. This particular one is the shade Ecstasy. These, again, really beautiful, super, super pigmented, really creamy, but long wearing, and they don't, like they transfer. So if you have a cup of water like I've got here and you go, oh, refreshing. Um, the lipstick will transfer onto the cup, but it doesn't smear all over your face. You're not worried that when you look in the mirror, you're gonna get it on your chin or up here and you've got the joker lines. Like you're not worried about it moving but it does transfer. But because these are so pigmented, they still last on your lips because a bit of pigment can be transferred and still has a lot left. So yeah, I'm also looking forward to giving these more love in my Project Apocalypse series, um, which will be in the new year. Now, the one that I'm currently wearing, um, and this is just to represent a whole range, these are the Bourjois Velvet, the pencils. Now I heard somewhere that Bourjois is exiting Australia, I think. I hope not. They always, they've always they been saying that for the past five years, to be fair, but these are fantastic. These are velvety matte lip pencils. I'm wearing the shade 11 Red Vintage, um, and these are gorgeous. Again, I'm waiting to review these. I'll probably cull a few shades that I just won't wear, but I love the formula. If you like the formula of the NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencils, these are pretty much a dead-on dupe for it, or at least gives you the very similar finish, where it's a very, very matte, almost like there's no shine to it. You put it on, it looks matte, which I love. I love that effect on the lips, because especially if you've got a bright, bold color, like a flat matte, just the color just like looks intense and really vibrant. There's no shine to distract you. So I really love the effect of these. They last really, really well um, throughout the day and they're comfortable. They, they do feel like they don't set down that you can't transfer. There's a little bit of creaminess to them to some degree, but they're dry enough to stay on your lips. Um, so I wouldn't recommend these for people with dry lips, but uh, if you do like a matte lip product and you just want something that you can throw on your handbag, easy to apply, and you want something that's cheaper than NARS, um, these bourgeois ones, I still, I still love. What can I say? I still love them. And I have actually delved into these um, quite a few times throughout the year. So even though I've been doing my Project Apocalypse on days where I'm like, I just want to go out and wear like a really vibrant coral shade. Um, I go to my drawer that's got the uh, bourgeois pencils and I pick out that one. So pretty much every, these are sharpenable, every pencil like in the range, I think I've got like a dozen of them, they've all been sharpened at least a couple of times. That's how much I like all of them. Yeah, they're great. All right, onto skincare. Um, a few of these products I no longer have, so I'll just talk about them and have them on the screen. First one is the Good Molecules Silicon Free Priming Moisturizer. I like this, I used it up. Um, this to me is not a primer, it's a priming moisturizer. So it's the last word that you look at. This is just a moisturizer. I've seen a few people get a bit confused by this product because they do think it is like a hydrating primer. Look, you can use it as that, but also you can use any moisturizer as a primer if you want some more moisture. But what I think makes this product really good besides the price point, so it's pretty affordable, is the fact that it just works with everything. And that's where I think maybe it has a good, like pri priming might be a good description for it because it doesn't clash with anything I've used it with. I can use it over oils, serums, any skincare has no problem. I can layer sunscreens over the top, has no issue with it. There's no little balls that form. There's no separation. There's no greasiness. There's nothing. It just works really well. And it's also really good at layering makeup over the top of it. There's no, again, no clashing, no separating, no mingling 
badly. So it's one of those really good all rounder um, moisturizers. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. And it is, again, if I was ordering from Good Molecules, I'd probably order like five of them because I could imagine that being just a standard everyday moisturizer for me. I could, you know, of course I would use my actives and my sunscreen around it. So I'm getting all the goodness, but just as a basic moisturizer, I think it's one of the better ones I've tried. All right. The next thing I've also used up, this is the ultraviolet Queen Screen SBF 50. Um, this one is like a very liquidy white um, sunscreen that's in like a dropper bottle, um, but it is very comfortable. It might leave a bit of a slick to your skin. So it's something that I probably wouldn't use um, just on its own without maybe powdering it down a little bit um, on my oily skin anyway. But I found it was just a really pleasant sunscreen. Um, and it does, again, wear really well over skincare, under makeup. So it's one, I think I've got a backup in my cupboard. Um, so it's definitely one I would keep using, but I've used it up. So I really like ultraviolet. The Murad Essential Shield Vitamin C Day Moisturizer. Um, this I've used up as well and I did like it. Um, again, I think, look, Murad prices, I like Murad. I think their products are good. Um, but I would probably prefer to go for a vitamin C serum and then a basic moisturizer like, um, the good molecules followed by an SPF. I sort of feel like when everything's all in one, I sort of don't trust it to do all of the things, if that makes sense, especially SPF. SPF, you actually need to apply a decent layer and it needs to be sort of over the top of everything. So um, I think I still used, I think I was mainly using that in winter. I was just like a quick step and we're in lockdown, so it didn't really matter. Um, but yeah, that was a nice product, but I don't, I don't know if I would repurchase it. Like I wouldn't rush out to buy it. Um, but if I had it or if I bought it in a pack, I would enjoy using it again. It was very enjoyable. All right. Pharmacy Green Clean Makeup Melt Away Cleansing Balm. This was another product that I was considering putting in my 2021 favorites until I realized I mentioned it last year. Still got it um, and I'm currently using it. So I was using it sort of sparingly um, until I was using up a cleansing oil that I had in my bathroom. But now I've used that up. This is my go-to. Smells, smells like lime. It's like this really zesty punch of lime. I love it. This is such a nice product. And what I love the most about it is it's a cleansing balm that doesn't leave a greasy residue. I know some people love that about cleansing balms, but as an oily skin person, I hate that. Any grease left on my face likely breaks me out um, and makes me look too oily and gross. This ends up I would say that this is more of a solid cleansing oil. So as soon as you warm it in your hands, um, it melts into an oil and it acts like a normal cleansing oil that emulsifies completely and washes off. So I do love it to the point that I have uh, the cherry version. I bought the cherry version recently and I actually haven't opened this or smelt this. So I want to do it now just to, uh, it's actually bigger. Oh, there we go. So it's bigger. I can't smell it. Do I have COVID? It smells like Play-Doh. All right, I don't want to dip my finger in it and break the surface because um, it's unused and I don't want to sort of like get it all gross. Um, but I can't, I can't smell any cherry, but I'm sure the formula is just as good, but I think I prefer the original green clean one. The next thing I mentioned was the Ordinary Rosehip Oil. This is like my second or third bottle that I've had in, you know, however long, uh, and it's probably halfway. So I do, this is the only rosehip oil I've been using because I feel like it is very affordable, but also works just as well as the expensive ones. So I still do like this, but I don't use rosehip oil every day anymore, but I do, I do still like this and I still have it. Next thing was the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5. Now I remember people mentioning that in the UK, you can buy like big tubes of this. Man, I wish we had that available because I have at least two tubes of these on the go at any one time. Usually one um, in my kids like change table and one in the change bag because this is really good for nappy rash. It's really good for face rashes, body rashes, anything. If your kid has like eczema, it's good for that. My kid is sort of like semi-allergic to some flowers and often if he's like playing in 
the park sometimes he gets like rashes and this sort of helps clear it up i also remember in the comments a few people were mentioning like use pseudo cream instead and it will like heal nappy rash and stop nappy rash i use pseudo cream or like um curash powder on my kid every time i change him but i find that they don't heal nappy rash they prevent nappy rash from occurring but you actually need something like this to heal it so i use this for everything this is such a good cream and i've gone through at least a dozen tubes in the last year and i currently have two on the go because the best i also mentioned the laura mercier almond coconut milk body butter i think i used this up but it was beautiful and luxurious it is such a treat yourself body butter if you really value a beautiful luxurious body butter that makes you feel like you've just gone to like a day spa or something um that one is great i haven't repurchased it because um i don't really need it again having oily skin i sort of use i look i was using it occasionally and it was more like to make myself feel like fancy and nice and pampered so yes i still love that but i i've used that one up i've also used up the daveness hair refresher this was a dry shampoo um now i haven't repurchased it i have basically been using um the tinted batiste because i find that batiste works fairly, fairly well on me the tinted version doesn't have the crazy white cast that the original one does on my hair anyway like i've got quite dark brown hair um so i have been getting that like cheap when i see it like 50 percent off i'll buy like three bottles so i haven't bought the davenez one but i do think the davenez one is better it's just like three times the amount and um, you know, and it's also harder to get. You have to sort of get it at a salon kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I haven't repurchased that, but it is still a good dry shampoo, but I've used it up. Then I mentioned Nabla brushes and I still love Nabla brushes. Um, I've got so many brushes. I, I've got like ridiculous. I think I've gotten rid of maybe a quarter or a third of the brushes. Um, and I still have like this overflowing drawer of brushes so my nabla brushes don't get much love because whatever's at the top of the drawer is what gets most love and then i wash those and they go back at the top of the drawer so um, i sort of have to dig these out to use them but i do think the quality is really really good and the shapes are really lovely i think these are probably at the sigma quality but softer um, these are vegan as well um, so they're not animal hair but they feel like they could be they don't look like animal hair but they feel like they have that softness that animal hair brushes have. So I feel like these are really lovely brushes and I do really enjoy using them when I do pull them out. Um, but they do get lost amongst all my other brushes. And I do still love these kind of uh, precision powder brush like for highlighting or under eye powdering or something. I think their shapes are really lovely. Um, they look really nice and they're just nice performing brushes so i still do like those some nail products uh and funnily enough all my nail polishes are still sort of unpacked so um i had these out in a drawer because i just had done my nails and when i was looking at my list i'm like oh convenient these are on the list and they are right in front of me so the first thing is the miracle treatment base coat from kester black now i do mention that i love this base coat not only does it have like a pearlescent sort of effect to it so if you put it on and just leave it on it has like a little bit of a shine um so it's nice for that but it also is a treatment base coat so it's supposed to be quite nourishing for your nails but what i like most about it is it's a great base if you want to use normal nail polish and then do a gel top coat to seal it in and sort of have your nail polish last almost as long as a gel manicure but without the sort of base coat that sticks so much that it damages your nails. I feel like this is just a more gentler version of doing the gel thing. So um, I've sort of swapped completely from using a gel base coat to this Kester Black Miracle Treatment one um, because I think it grips the nail polish and the gel top coat really well um, and it doesn't sort of like um, just flake off. I find that other base coats i have tried them and i feel like sometimes when you have put the gel top coat on maybe a day or two later you get like the nails popping off because it's not stuck properly to the nails but for some reason this base coat works really well with gel so still love that and i also still love the supersonic top coat um, as you can see i'm not sure if you can can you see that there's not much left there's really not much left so i'm due for a new one and um i like this because when i use normal nail polish um, it does extend the wear. Not like a gel top coat would by any means, 
but it like I'm the kind of person I've got quite flaky shitty nails um, and nail polish like normal nail polish might last on me without chipping like 12 to 24 hours at best um, whereas this might last a few days without chipping so um, this definitely does work at keeping nail polish on my nails and it particularly works well with the Kester Black range as well so that's what I'm currently wearing. Now I did also mention I think it was their spring collection I'll have a photo on the screen um, I do like those still I still have them all I did do a declutter of my nail polish collection I got rid of about um, a third to a half of my nail polishes and they all stayed because I love them um, but I don't have them to show you at the moment the one that I am wearing which is again Kester Black um, this is the shade Never Nude and it's a really beautiful sort of deep nude I have this on my toes and my nails and I feel like it's a it's a nice beautiful nude last things I mentioned were from Bokeh Beauty which is my friend Jacob's brand um, he brought out a lash glue I'm still using it to be fair I don't use false lashes much like 2021 was just like 2020 Melbourne Australia which is where I live became the most lockdown city in the world so I didn't really go out and about and need false lashes and I sort of got into the habit of filming without lashes so I don't use them often but when I do use them I still use this lash glue I still think it's great and it's latex free and it's all that kind of good stuff um, and I do also still like his lashes um, I mentioned his boys collection which was a more natural version I still like that collection um, I've packed away all my lashes in like a box so I'll only keep out like one or two sets at a time the one that I'm currently wearing so I'm only wearing corner lashes so these are the Giselle lashes so these are a little bit more dramatic than the boys collection um, but there were sort of these two other little clusters here that I cut off and I'll use these as sort of like three sets of outer corner lashes because a full strip is just too much for me whereas the boys lashes are a lot more natural and they're something that I would wear more frequently but I am trying to pull out some lashes that I've got um, just stockpiled and trying to get some use out of it so that's why I've got these tiny like little out of corner lashes today all right so they were all my favorites of 2020 and I have to say that generally my opinion hasn't really changed on them I think the downside of a project pan and a pan that palette series and you know trying to really use up specific makeup um, means that that's all you really focus on and you tend to ignore the things you gave love to the year prior so a lot of this I still really love but I haven't been using it as much as I would like to this is a nice reminder that I've got some cool stuff here that I should put in my top drawer and start playing with occasionally like I don't wear project pan makeup every day I usually use it like um, maybe 80% of the time um, and sometimes I'll use like all project pan face and then change up the eye or change up the lip or whatever it happens to be but I think last year being a big sort of still COVID lockdown year um, I've just been sort of knuckling down and trying to use up things that I've earmarked to use up so I've sort of forgotten a lot of these but I still have a lot of love for them the only thing that I don't have as much love for is probably the Colourpop palette and that's because the Super, Super Shock shadow formula is drying out and becoming more difficult to use and I don't feel like I reach for that over the Natasha Denona one for example all right so let me know what your top couple of favorite products of 2020 were and do you still love them now do you? I'm curious. So thank you so much for watching. I'll list everything I mentioned in the description box and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.